welcome, Greg. Oh, um, thank you. For and me. so, Greg, let's let's kick off uh, with a little bit of introductions. Um, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? And I say a little bit. I mean, we've been talking for a while. <laughs> yeah, so, we have. Uh, um, could you tell tell me what, why? You, what, yeah, why are you here in this yeah place right now? <laughs> yes. Oh well, I've you know experienced uh, cancer. Uh, I was first diagnosed with cancer as a seven-year-old. I had a stage four Wilms tumor, which is cancer of the kidney. Uh, and with it being stage four, that had spread to my lungs and my arteries. Mm. So back then, you know, late 80s, I had to have a, a lot of chemo and radiotherapy to help me get through that. Uh, and, you know, I was very fortunate to get through that. And, but, you know, later life, the late effects of cancer have kind of come back to, mm -hmm. to haunt me. And in, when I was 21, I was diagnosed with deep vein thrombosis. Uh, so the main vein that takes blood back to my heart became blocked. And at the age of 30, I was diagnosed with stage two bowel cancer. So mm. it's, uh, it's, it's been an interesting time health-wise. And, you know, but afterwards was the, the thing that kind of made me reevaluate my life the most. And yeah. after being diagnosed as an adult and surviving cancer, I suffered with post-traumatic stress disorder, mm. which was something that I, I, you know, I never even thought was possible with cancer, which is ridiculous because it's all in the title, post-trauma. Yeah. I was associated with, with war veterans and yeah. you know, that kind of thing. But that really kind of just, I can safely say it was worse than both my cancers put together. Yes. So to help me get through that, I set up something called 101 Things to Do When You Survive. And, uh, and that's, I guess, how I'm here today, yeah. you know, talking to you guys. Yeah. And, and, and so tell me, let's go back to, to the early treatments in the 80s. And how, how old were you, did you say? Yeah, seven when seven. I was diagnosed. And when, like, a child had cancer, how much were you aware of what was happening? Uh, yeah, you know what, I, there's certain things I remember about that time. I remember being sick a lot. Yeah. Uh, I remember how I felt after I had my kidney removed. But other than that, I remember my doctors and, and nurses as well. But there's not much, you know, yeah. I just remember being very, very sick. And remember certain things about my ward, and uh, but it was, yeah, I don't remember anything before that. Mm. Though, which is the interesting thing. So when I think about how my life started, it, it's with, with cancer. Yes, yeah. And so you had surgery to remove the kidney, and was there other treatments as well? There was, there was, because uh, I had tumours in my lungs and my arteries. I had a lot of radiotherapy on yeah. my upper body uh, to get rid of those. But that seemed to have a, an adverse effect as a, a seven-year-old yeah. going through that. Of course, I wasn't fully developed or uh, my, my body was still growing. Uh, so it's, it's led to a few issues. I, I struggle to put muscle and fat on my upper body. I'm kind of the same width from my chest to my, yeah. my waist. Uh, I've got scarred lungs, uh, something called heart failure, which sounds a lot worse than it is. Yeah. Uh, Good. But I've got <laughs> the heart of a 60-year-old, basically. Right. So my heart doesn't function as well as it should do for a 38-year-old. Mm. Uh, and scoliosis, so my kind of my, my rib cage points one way and my pelvis points the other. Yeah. Uh, so there's been a few a few issues from that. And I, I, the thing I like to emphasize is that back in the 80s, you know, the radiotherapy wasn't as accurate as yeah. it is now. It was very much a general thing, yes, so yeah. it's kind of had a more detrimental effect on me from being young and being in the 80s than, yeah. than now. I, I even find that with, so my treatment, what was it, uh, about, yeah, just over nine or so years ago, and e even now, like, I talk about the chemicals I had, and they're all out of date, Yeah, and yeah. you're like, well, actually, I'm sorry, I can't really, so from the 80s, I can't imagine I know, what's, it's... yeah. I remember some of the treatments were very cutting edge, right. and they were just bringing in, because I, during my chemo, I was, I was sick all the time, wow. and I remember at the time they were bringing in a new drug that that suppressed the sickness. So it was meant yeah. to stop the sickness, but it just kind of suppressed it and stopped me being sick. But right. I still felt sick. So, and that's come on leaps and bounds. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness! Over the last thirty years, it's, mm. it's amazing. So that must have been. So when you relapsed at thirty, is it considered a relapse when it's? Like that distance? Uh, no, no, no. It was, uh, and I, you know, it was separate mm. to that. They believe that, it, that the bowel cancer was a cause of the radiotherapy because it had damaged lots of my cells and my uh, external and internal kind of organs and, yes, and, yeah. and, and structure. Uh, but uh, but yeah, it was it was it was treated as a separate 
a separate cancer. Yes, yeah, yeah. And how how was it that you, you like were aware that that you were realised that something was wrong? Ah, uh, it, it's for a, about a year. I'd progressively been feeling more and more tired. Uh, and people were telling me, because I, I just turned 30, people were just saying, you know, that's just how you feel at 30. Yeah. And I thought, my goodness, this is a nightmare. Yeah. What am I going to be like when I'm 40? But I literally, I couldn't walk up the stairs without yes. feeling tired or I was just so exhausted doing things. And I kept going back to the doctors and uh, they found I had an iron deficiency and they put me on iron tablets and they didn't mm. seem to work. And then my hematologist actually put me in for a colonoscopy. So they put a camera at my bum and, and that's where they found a, a 10 centimeter tumor right. in my transverse colon, yeah. which had just been bleeding for goodness knows how long. Yeah. I could have had it up to about five or 10 years. Mm. Um, but it's, uh, but I, in, in all kind of respect, I found it early. They found it early. Right. So they managed just to kind of whip out the, the half of my bowel, pretty much the transverse colon and a bit there and then have chemotherapy on top of that. And yes. luckily it hadn't spread to any, mm. any lymph nodes. Or